I was not ready for my baby. No, I was not. I am um, getting so wet so frequently. <laughs> so I was forced to keep running to the washroom to just dry myself up. And I was wondering, why am I leaking? Why is... And when I smell it, it's not really urine. Ah, Mutaro, what you get me see? Hey! I it's so frequent. I mean, this cramp... The cramping thing is becoming so painful and so frequent. Let's continue this story in the second part of my unexpected labor and delivery story. See you on the next part. ready for my baby no i was not i mean i was ready to be a mom but i wasn't ready for the baby's arrival so i had done my last visit to my obgyn let's just say obstetric gynecologist <laughs> so the word is hard so i had visited my gyna the last to me i thought that was my last visit but he said I was gonna have a last visit before the baby comes. So he was so sure because I was going I was going to be a first time mom that the baby would come at 40 weeks. Yo, I my baby came at 38 weeks. Was it 38 or 36? 38 weeks. What I know is uh the baby came two weeks earlier, so that is 38 weeks. So it all began like a joke. One Sunday afternoon, I'm just in the kitchen and I feel I am getting so wet so frequently. So I was forced to keep running to the washroom to just dry myself up. And I was wondering, why am I leaking? What? Why is, and when I smell it, it's not really urine. It doesn't have the urine smell. It's just some bland smell. I can't even explain it. Stop it. Get some help. So in my mind, I thought I was just having some discharge. But between my thighs, um, it was so uncomfortable because I, could, I, I was frequently getting wet or damp between my thighs. So I mentioned to some people and I'm like, uh, I'm really feeling damp frequently. Like I'm getting wet. I can't explain why i don't know could could i be could it be it's my water that is breaking because i had never experienced my water breaking and everyone was like no it can't be your water breaking so i just relaxed chilled and i felt no okay could be i'm also tired because i've been standing in the kitchen for a while i remember i was making oat cookies in the microwave and i decided to take a break and just come rest so i came to my room and i was just relaxed chilling and i remember i loved taking a mix of dates and milk so i would blend some dates and milk because i have been an daily for a very long time and my gynae told me yeah big since i don't like eating liver and i don't like taking milk plain milk i just fortify it up with some dates they are high in calcium or did he say yeah they are high in calcium and iron so i just made my mix of my smoothie of the dates and the milk and i came to the room to rest um so at around 6 p.m uh, i go to the washroom and i realize i have when i'm just wiping myself because it was just a short call when i'm wiping myself i realize there's so so much discharge so much so i decided to just take a photo because i had been going through people's experiences on bath and some of them would say there was a mucus plug i did not know that was a mucus plug so i decided to just take a photo uh, just in case I go to the hospital, I can show it. Again, my baby sister is a nurse. She has specialized all her life. She has worked in the maternity section and the pediatric section. So she's good with the kids. She's good with mothers who are due for delivery. Or let's say mothers who are due, actually. So I send it to her and I'm like, see, is able to check this out. Could this be what I'm thinking? So she just sent me those emojis of 
she's all smiling and she's like no breathe in not yet so sunday goes by uh and it's monday i'm just actually i had taken a break from work so i was just in the house that monday had said i wouldn't go to work so i was just chilling in the house and i was craving dead and milk but that smoothie i was really craving it so i made like two glasses chilled and the girl gulped that down and i was so thirsty during my whole pregnancy i couldn't take cold water but that day i i felt like i really wanted cold water so me to the fridge and cold water your because i remember we never used i never used to have cold water in the fridge so i took ice cubes in a in a glass and just added some room temperature water and i took that so at night i kept on having some cramps you would think you actually want to have your period so i'd have my cramps on and off and all this time i just assumed yo they're just cramps they're just cramps ikonini um and my baby was so actively kicking i'm like what is wrong with this baby today he, 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 so I'm, I'm 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 confused i'm like is it just cramping or i should be worried so i asked my sis again and my best friend hi bestie <laughs> so i asked her because she's a mom of two very beautiful baby girls um i asked her okay could this be what and they tell me breathe first just breathe those are just normal are they called braxton kicks so they are preparation kicks just kicks to to just lie to you that it's labor but they're not it wasn't really labor in my mind so i go to bed i go through the day and i go to bed and it's crazy um i couldn't sleep i, I mean the cramps started being so painful and they were coming um so fast so i'm like but these cramps normally if i experience my cramps i'd have so much pain on my joints uh, and i just want to be on my back but now these cramps this time they don't want me to be on my back so at around 1 a.m actually at 12 a.m 12 no, 12 midnight i ask my sis and she and thank god she was on duty that night on shift night shift that night so i ask her uh these kicks are becoming so painful and so frequent i mean this cramp the cramping thing is becoming so painful and so frequent and i feel like the baby is quiet so she tells me i want you to just rest take some water and rest listen to that i think in her mind she knew i was just in my early stage i was, I was in my early labor stage and she didn't want to tell me so I rest and at 2 a.m. No. No, 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 no. So I just take um a sticky note, a yellow sticky note, I'll never forget. And I decide, let me just time these pains because they are not really continuous cramps. Uh so they were coming and uh, they give me a break, a breather, then again they reoccur. So I decided let me time these. So when I started timing, it was like after 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, you feel so much pain, you're in so much pain, and I'm like, no, what is going on? So I started, I started timing them. And I remember I couldn't even walk to where I keep my stationery. I just pulled a pencil that was nearby and I started writing on it. Because beside my bed, I put some pen and the sticky, actually the sticky note was just, it had dropped just next to the bed. So I wrote that and I sent my sister. She asked me, uh, you have a bag ready and your medical card near? I'm like, yes. Uh, no. So she asked me, just throw in um, something. Uh, then you can walk around the house. When you want to take a break, take a break. Then at 6 a.m., between 6 and 7, we can organize you go to the hospital. Don't be scared. It is not labor. Just keep breathing through the cramps. That is exactly what I, I, I was doing. So that is around 2 a.m. At 3 a.m. I text my BC and I tell her, check what's up. I've sent you something on the frequency of how the cramps or the cramping is 
occurring or coming up and um this is also what i feel could this be early signs of labor so she just calls me and tells me mama <laughs> Oh, you're sure, yeah. Having had two kids, I trusted her. So she told me one thing she emphasized that, emphasized that was the same as what my sister kept on telling me is you breathe through the cramps. Keep breathing with your mouth, through your mouth. Deep, deep breath. Well, like, it's fine. So I called my guy now at 4 a.m. God bless Dr. Yusuf of Aga Khan Hospital. Mombasa, that guy is just the best. I he's walk, he walked with me rather when, during my whole pregnancy journey, and and even received my baby. And that that guy now is just God bless that guy. So I call him at four a.m. He picked. Imagine he picks, and I explain to him, and he's like, "How many weeks are we?" I tell him, he's like, mm, "That's weird for a first time mother, but do this. Just come to the hospital, go straight to the maternity wing. I'll join you there shortly. Uh, the nurse, that, the nurses that you'll find there, will attend to you, but I'll be joining you shortly. Don't panic." So when he tells me that, I call my bestie and I tell her, "Chick, yo, Yusuf has asked me to check in." So she's like, it's fine. You'll get me waiting for you at the hospital. Just come. So because I couldn't drive myself to the hospital, I called one of our very, very close friends. And it's a guy. It's a guy. Yo, a guy. So he comes. And he comes with my other friend from church. Because they were neighbors. I had asked her to just. And that day, in, it had really, really rained in Mombasa heavily. The roads were flooded. And it's crazy when it rains down here traffic is just you don't want to experience that so he comes with my friend Maki, i was wearing some free dress i didn't even have the strength to change but my sister asked me to go shower so she asked me please shower get ready so that when they come for you you're just set don't go to the hospital without showering it will also help relax your body so i jump in the bathroom uh down the shower and I'm okay. And you know what? My pregnancy just led me to that same, same dress. Same, same dress that I was wearing. I'll, I'll try to get a photo of when I was checking out of the hospital. I think I still checked out in that dress. I don't know. There's something about it. So I threw in that same dress. Took my kiyondo and a kikoi inside and my pass that had my medical card. That is all I carried to the hospital. So I go. Uh, so my friends come for me. And they take me to the hospital. Um, and I check in the maternity wing. How many minutes is this video? <laughs> okay, so I check in in the maternity wing, um, and I'm like, Hi, um, imagine the nurses there are so kind, they just don't ask you questions. They're like, Hi, how are you? My name is so and so. Please come to this side. Dr. Yusuf had already called them apparently. You're Priscilla. Yes, I'm Priscilla. Please come to this side. So I follow them. I follow the lady nurse and she was so nice, very kind. So she puts me on a waiting bed and I'm chilling there. I didn't know actually that was the labor room. And I'm like, yo, me, I'm gonna chill here, I'm gonna sleep. I'm in safe hands at the hospital. So your chick here does what? Chills. Let's continue this story in the second part of my unexpected labor and delivery story. See you on the next part.